There are many loops available on the market. You can change the tempo and the key and all of that sort of thing, and they work magically. However, how do you create them with all of this stuff intact? What should you avoid? Here then is Logic Pro X, which I'm using to record my loop on the bass. I've got a drummer here, which sounds a bit like this. Now I've actually set the hi-hats to play at 16th notes because it's important to rhythmically delineate this. Now I'm going to try and record a loop as best as I can and then hopefully these pitfalls can be avoided, but I'll just try it. Okay, let's have a little listen to that. Rhythmically, that was okay. Let's see what happens if I try actually putting it as a loop between the bars three and five. Let's see what happens if I try looping from uh, bar three to four only. See if that works as a as a, an entity. Yeah, that works all right too. Okay, so I got that right. It loops between bars three and four and four and five, and it does the whole thing. Now I'm going to record one that's not quite so good. Let's reinstate my drums. So now I'm going to have some problems. If we go to bar 10, which is where my loop began, you see I was early with that first note. Now that means that I'm missing the actual finger on the string that, that first instant. You can see that the waveform looks a little bit different at the start than it does as the note progresses. Now also, if I cut at bar 10, let's say I wanted to just loop that, you can see that my waveform doesn't start that blue block on the zero line. Now that, what that means is you've got a maximum deviation in level and then zero is in the middle. So my line along the middle of the computer where my arrow is there, that is silence and then the maximum is both sides. I've actually got this zoomed in slightly. Um, I haven't over recorded it, but just so that you can see. Now if I play from bar 10 now, I'm just going to go slightly before it. I'll mute the drums and you should be able to hear a nasty click. There you go. So you've got that click at the beginning of that note, which is completely unwelcome. Now, what you could do, and the, the rhythm of the rest of it isn't very nice either. If I was to go to bar 11 and split this, so if I wanted one bar, you can see I've cut straight through another note as well. So I'm going to undo that. Now I'm going to see if I can move this first note. Now, I've got two notes that are joined quite a lot together here in the middle. But you can see that the waveform is, they are further apart at the beginning and then closer together as the note changes. The higher the note, the closer those things get together. So you can see where one note ends and the next one begins. It's roughly there. Switch the snap off so I can cut exactly at the line. In fact, it's not there, it's a bit further. I just cut it right there. Now I'm going to make this shorter and then bring the whole note that I started so that it starts at the right place. There we go. Bar 10 and then if I just get rid of that. I'm going to have to try and fudge this slightly so that it doesn't cross at anything apart from the zero line. Now you can use the fade trick here. You can actually bring in, yeah, because there's no really, not really anywhere apart from there perhaps. That might work. Let's have a look. That's okay. That's all right. 
The problem with using fades is that actually it fades one note into the next and you can hear that slight chorusing effect if the fade is too long. So it's worth trying to look for these zero crossings. Now if I just go to the end, you can see that the end of the loop cut right through one of my notes there. That's not good. There are a few ways around this. I could try the, the fade trick here. So actually I'll just cut there and maybe cut there, get rid of that and bring this back here like this. And then use the fade tool between this, these, these two notes. Now, if I cut at bar 12, you can hear what I mean with that note. If I just play the end of that, you can hear that that note at the end sounds a bit chorusy. Well, you don't want that. So it's really important to get the length of the note right before you try anything like this. Now we could try a different length fade perhaps. So we could actually get rid of that, get rid of that fade and put something else over the top. Now sometimes you have to go into here and then actually find the fade. There we go, fade out zero. And then go to the other one. There we go. So that's got rid of the fade. Now, of course, it's there's clicks everywhere. It's just not very nice. So again, you'd have to resort to your trick of actually extending this until you had a complete cycle like that. But notice that there's a slight gain change because the note has died away. So we're going to encounter yet more problems with that. If I go there, get rid of that last note, cut at bar 12 and get rid of that little piece. We're also going to check that the bar 12 ends. It doesn't. So I'm going to have to put a fade there instead. Like that. Now, let's see what happens if I go between bars. Well, I'll just play this back first. Now, you can hear the to the timbre difference there. There's very little you can do about this because you can spend hours trying to get this right. And it's not going to work. So your best bet is to make sure that if you get a, something like that is to actually just do it again. When you come to the end of a loop, think, OK, what what's the first note of the loop? So that was an A. Dun. OK, the note is fine. The note is absolutely fine, actually. Now, because there's a gap before the final note, I could actually... Let's have a look. Now, because of the rhythmic context, that may work because you have silences between these notes. But of course, nothing beats playing it in again. And in fact, if it's a riff that you've written down or that you're reading, you could play it three or four times and pick the best one. Sometimes it works better if you're actually being, if you've been playing the loop a few times, you get into it and actually it starts to work more rhythmically. So in short, we need to make sure that that loop is absolutely as tight as you can get it before you export it. Now you can also sometimes with some loops you can split even just a quarter note if you want but then it becomes kind of not really worth having the loop because the musical aspect of it has to be that it's it, it makes sense with itself. So there we are there's a few bits and pieces about loops.